What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and today we have a lot to talk about. I'm assuming that this video is probably going to be between 25 and 30 minutes long, so make sure you're sitting down, you have your popcorn ready, and you're ready to listen to me speak about my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. There are a lot of a lot of takeaways to be taken away from last night's game against the Denver Broncos and we are going to be going over every single one of them from the offense from the defense from the special teams from the Jalen Ramsey situation from should Foles play if he comes back healthy or should we stick with the hot hand with Gardner Minshew all those answers to those questions and more coming up in a little bit but before we get into this video make sure you go ahead and drop a like down below if you think the Jaguars are going to be able to beat the Carolina Panthers next week make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified every single time I post a new Jags preview a Jags recap a crew cast or NFL picks we have a lot of content here on Treep Talks that you will enjoy. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Denver Broncos, week number four, recap. So let's first talk about the offensive side of the ball, and let's start off with probably the weakest performing group of yesterday's game, and that was the offensive line. Now the offensive line did well uh, run blocking for the most part, but Leonard Fournette also made a lot of guys miss in open field, and he also made a lot of guys miss in the hole. So the offensive line didn't do a tremendous job run blocking. I think a lot of that came down to Leonard Fournette, as well as the switch up of running backs that the Jags did that I said we needed to do in the preview, and it actually came to fruition. That was pretty cool to see. But the offensive line did, yeah, open up some running lanes for Leonard Fournette. One guy that stood out in particular, and even the announcers gave him a shout out, was Will Richardson. Will Richardson led the way for this offensive line, really dominated in the trenches, and he really stood out as one of the uh, better players on this O-line. You know, a guy that you don't hear a lot about is usually your best performing offensive lineman. You got guys like Jawan Taylor and Cam Robinson who had a couple of holding calls, you know, and Cam Robinson, of course, with his last second, last, you know, minute altercation with Leonard Fournette on the sidelines. And, you know, he almost got into a fight towards the end of the game as well. Like, these guys need to keep their composure. And that's another thing we're going to be addressing is the penalties and just, you know, the undiscipline of this team. Like, it's still really a big problem. Like, the Jags could have lost yesterday just based off of the penalties they gave up. They gave up over 100 yards in penalties. 12 penalties over 100 yards. And it was appalling, and it was ugly, and it was gross to see from the defensive penalties. It was mostly offensive penalties, really. Like, illegal hands to the face on the offensive line, holding, illegal man downfield. I think we had two illegal man downfield calls, and that's way too many illegal man downfield calls to get in a professional NFL game. You know, let alone getting one. You shouldn't be getting two in a game. That's just appalling. And, you know, Brandon Linder, a guy who didn't have, like, a single holding penalty or just, like, one up until this season, now has two in a row, two weeks in a row. He had one against the Titans, and now he had one against the Broncos. And this offensive line struggled. They gave up five, six sacks. <clears throat> on Gardner Minshew, and Gardner did a good job, too, evading pressure in the pocket, and we'll talk about that once we talk about the quarterback some more, but, you know, they did allow a lot of free rushers to come through, and Gardner Minshew really had to make a lot of plays with his feet in the pocket, you know, and that's just one thing that's fun to watch with Gardner Minshew is because, you know, he's a passer, so he's going to try and make the pass, so if you, if he has an opportunity to make a guy miss, stay in the pocket, he's going to try, and he's going to make a throw down the field, and this offensive line didn't give Gardner Minshew a clean pocket to throw to for most of the games, most of the for most of the game. Most of the passes that Gardner Minshew got off were really just quick, you know, releases that he had a clean pocket to throw to. You know, he didn't have a whole lot of time to hit guys deep down the field, and when he did, you know, he was getting hit. He didn't have time, you know, and he would throw it up there and, you know, kind of miss. Like, that DJ Chark, the, oh, the DJ Chark pass was terrible. He didn't drop it, and, you know, Gardner Minshew didn't miss. He hit him perfectly in stride in the end zone, beautifully but it got neglected because of a holding penalty on cam robinson so that's what we need to stop doing on the offensive side of the ball and on the offensive line especially is limit these stupid penalties that you could prevent limit these penalties because that is like the hardest thing this team has to overcome right now is itself like this team really struggles and it has for a long time to get out of its own way 
And this offensive line needs to stop holding, needs to stop doing ineligible people downfield, fucking stop with the hands to the face, and we'll be fine. This offensive line didn't impress me a whole lot, with the exception of Will Richardson. I thought Will Richardson put together a really, really good game. You know, it's going to add to his tape, and uh, I think really make sure to solidify his spot on the offensive line and stop, you know, subbing in him and A.J. Camp back and forth, back and forth. Like, Will Richardson has earned his spot there. He was the guy that I was really high on during the offseason. You know, me and Jason, when we discussed the offensive line, we kind of had that debate back and forth. You know, Jason said that he hasn't played a snap in the NFL yet. Why? What has he done? What has he earned? But, you know, he was a guy that this coaching staff obviously looked at as a project and was like, we could build this guy up to be a pretty good player. And so far, they did just that. And Will Richardson, you know, really impressed me. I thought he had a good game on the offensive line. And with his good game in general, I'm going to be giving this offensive line as a whole a C-. I think it could definitely do better. You know, if you limit these penalties and you actually give Gardner a clean pocket to throw to where he doesn't have to make all these magical, insane plays and, you know, he's not getting sacked five, six times a game, you know, maybe it'll boost it up. And you're probably thinking, Tree, but, you know, if there wasn't a clean pocket the whole time and he gave up, you know, five, six sacks, why does why do they get a C minus? Like, why not give him a D or an F? It's because Leonard Fournette ran for that many yards. And, you know, you can say all you want with how Leonard Fournette did that and how if Leonard Fournette contributed to those yards more so than this offensive line did really opening up holes for him, you know, you can make that argument all day long. But it starts with the guys in the trenches, and that offensive line put together a 225, 225-yard rushing day for Leonard Fournette. So that's something that you can't take away from this offensive line. So this offensive line overall is going to be getting a C-. Next up, we're going to be discussing the running backs. Leonard Fournette had a career day, and he really, really looked like he was working hard out there. That was fun to see. That's the Leonard Fournette that we all know and love and we wanted to see. You know, we always said, are we going to get the 2017 Fournette, the 2018 Fournette? What are we going to get? You know, and he's going to have games like this. This is very Leonard Fournette-esque. And, you know, when we step back and we kind of take our emotions out of, you know, the things we say, and I'm the worst when it comes to that. Like, I'm probably the most emo- one of the more emotional Jaguar fans that I know. There's definitely some more emotional Jags fans that I've seen on social media, on, like, Facebook especially especially, you guys love when I say that, um, you know, I see them, and they, you know, they speak with a lot of emotion, they're like, cut, dude, there was so many, the amount of just, bad, like, Gardner Minshew needs to go, Gardner Minshew is playing terrible, the amount of that that I seen in Jaguar Facebook groups was appalling, it was disgusting, you know, like, god, I hated it, but, you know, Leonard Fournette, I think, you know, kind of wanted to go out there, and he probably seen some of the criticism that he was getting online, getting from these analysts, you know, saying that, Gardner Minshew is the reason the Jags are winning, and, you know, not a lot of Leonard Fournette is contributing to that. Fournette went out there against a very solid Denver defense. You know, they said all this stuff about them not getting a sack all season, not getting a turnover, you know, and those may be stats that they have, and they may have these, like, drought stats or whatever, but Denver has a really solid defense. They still have Vaughn Miller. They had Bradley Chubb out there, of course, unfortunately, suffered an ACL tear, so quick uh healing for Bradley Chubb I really do like him I think that he is a talented player and I wish him nothing but the best in his future endeavors but this Denver defense was definitely really solid definitely really underrated uh they were ranked middle of the pack too they're about like the 14th 13th ranked defense in the league and you know Gardner Minshew and Leonard Fournette did their thing against him and this is not a defense that you should take lightly to run 200 yards against like there, And there's another stat, too, that I'm sure some of you guys are going to pull out and say, but Treb, like, look at all these other rushers in the last three years that have had 200-yard games against the Broncos. And I, I guess I get that, but, you know, like, this is still a solid defense. Like, I'm not trying to take anything away from Leonard Fournette. I really like Denver's defense, and the fact that he got those rushing yards against them, I think, says a lot. And I think the effort level that he shows says a lot. And one thing that also says a lot about these running backs and about Leonard Fournette's big day is how much things change when he is fresh more often than not. Even if when Raquel Armstead would come in for a play or two, you know, Fournette would come back in there, fresh legs, you know, and he'd get a six, five, six yards. That's what I said in the preview. Like, if we do this all season long, where we have Leonard Fournette get the five, six yard runs, get Raquel Armstead in there, get, you know, whatever he can do, because he had a big, couple of big chunk runs as well. He had a touchdown reception in his first real game action that he received. I think he had 
one run prior to that game all season long. So, you know, to see him get that action and get a touchdown, that's really special for Raquel Armstead out of Temple. That is a huge, huge accomplishment for that guy. Uh, you know, a guy that a lot of Jags fans really wanted to see out there. So, Raquel Armstead, props to you. Really was excited to see you play. That was a good game by you. And you really helped Leonard Fournette, too. I don't think that 225-yard game happens if Leonard Fournette's in there every single snap. It just doesn't happen. He's going to get worn out quick. Now, hopefully... This is something that the Jags continue to do. Like They see the benefit of having you know two running backs play, the Raquel Armstead, Leonard Fournette running back tandem. And it could be, and you could keep on doing it as much as you did. Like, I don't know the exact stats. You know, I think Raquel might have got maybe eight carries, you know? Like, if you still, like, play Raquel like that limited, even then, like, keep doing that because I hope it's not an altitude thing. I hope they didn't just do that because they were in Denver and they were like, oh, Leonard, you know, the altitude's bad, but Raquel, you're not going to play anymore. You know, you're just going to sit back, relax, just chill on the bench. Not even going to play. You know, I hope they continue to use Raquel Armstead and I hope they continue to run the ball well, obviously, and continue to uh, evolve as players, you know, Leonard and Raquel, because I think Leonard's another guy that... He's in his third year in the league. I think, you know, he's coming up to a year where he might get his fifth-year option. And, you know, he really needs to prove himself. And, you know, going from, like, the bottom of the pack as far as, like, leading rushers go to jumping all the way up to fourth in the league, like, that is that is huge. You know, that puts him in a contention to win a rushing title now. And now we're completely talking about Leonard Fournette completely differently. Like, that's how quick things change, not only for the Jags, but in the NFL. Like, you're like... We're talking so much shit about Leonard Fournette, you know, two weeks ago in the Houston game, and he didn't get in at the one-yard line, and we were all so pissed, including myself, the emotional Jags fan that I am, but, you know, he turns it around, has a 220-yard rushing game, and really does his thing out there, and he looks like the player that we all expected him to be. So with that being said, I'm going to be giving the running backs a A grade, an A-plus grade. You know, 225 yards, there was no negative runs, there was no fumbles nothing like that the running backs had a hell of a day and i'm very excited to see what leonard fournette continues to do for the rest of the season and hopefully they continue to feed raquel armstead as well now on the flip side we're going to be talking about the wide receivers the wide receivers and the tight ends i thought played well there were a couple of times that um i thought they could have gave maybe a little bit better effort you know gardner the thing about gardner Minshew, and we'll again talk about that when we hop into the quarterback discussion He doesn't really miss throws by a lot. Like, all of his throws are always really close, you know, in the vicinity, hitting guys in the hands. There's a couple of drops. There were a couple of drops in this game, too, that we we just need to fix. We can't be dropping balls. The only guy that just really never drops anything is DJ Chark. If anything hits Chark in the hands, he catches it. It's insane. DJ Chark's progression has been one of the most fun things of all of 2019 this uh, so far. Is watching DJ Chark really emerge as the Jags' number one wide receiver, really emerge as a guy that Gardner Minshew trusts and relies on, and you know, just being reliable, like being a number one wide receiver. Like that is so insane to me that this guy who I would always say last year, I wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud, is no longer so awkward, and he's out there and he's making plays. These wide receivers uh, and pass catchers as a whole. James O'Shaughnessy, man. Like, Gardner Minshew relies on James O'Shaughnessy a little bit. Like, you don't really see it in the stat sheet, but he likes going to O'Shaughnessy in short yardage situations, you know, as a security blanket. And I really think James O'Shaughnessy is going to continue to emerge. And that does really bring up the question, how much are the Jags going to be using a guy like Josh Oliver once he comes back from injury and he plays? Like, that's going to be interesting. I think he, I think Oliver is playing next week, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how much the Jags play him, you know, and how much of an impact he really makes. Because he's supposed to be like a vertical threat tight end, you know, somebody that is more of a pass catcher than a blocker. And, you know, a guy like James O'Shaughnessy has always been more of a blocking tight end. But he's still, you know, going out there. I <laughs> freaking made myself jump by hitting the mic. I apologize for that. You guys are going to be making a gif out of that or something. But, you know, it was it was fun. You know, James O'Shaughnessy is a fun player and a guy that I think has definitely made some necessary strides to improve his game. And, you know, very excited to see his progression. DJ Chark, a guy... That was fun to watch. Chris Conley made some plays. Marquise Lee catching his first pass since tearing his uh, ACL. Like, that's awesome. That's awesome to see, you know, him getting in 
and making a play. It was on a third down, too. It was like third and four, catching it on third down. Like, these wide receivers have continued to evolve and continue to impress me each and every week. And with that being said, I'm going to be giving them a solid B. There are some drop issues that I think need to be resolved just a little bit. But these wide receivers as a whole are playing really good football. And I'm very excited to see what the next step is for these guys. Now we're going to be talking about the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, Mr. Gardner freaking Minshew, dude. I love this guy so much. So freaking much. Like, more than I've ever loved Blake Bortles, and that's saying a lot. Like, I would put my neck on the line for Blake Bortles. Like, I'd go on the internet, spew some shit, talk, you know, find all the facts and all the stats I can find about Blake Bortles to really v validate the fact that he's a good quarterback. I don't have to do that with Gardner Minshew because Gardner goes out there and he gets it done. And the fact that he's a six-round pick still blows my mind. You know, of course, played for my guys at Washington State. I met him. Great dude. Great football player. And he played out of his freaking mind last year. I'm not going to say really out of his mind. There were some missed throws. But when it came down to it and the Jags needed to win the game, Gardner put everything on his shoulders, went out there, and played incredible football. And played so gosh damn good. Like, he played so good. Like, down the stretch, man. He's so poised in the pocket. I don't understand. You know, he, now he's, he's won two Rookie of the Week awards. Probably on his way to winning three. And, you know, Daniel, jo Daniel Jones still leads, like, the odds as far as who's going to win Rookie of the Year. Like, Gardner Minshew should have that honor, damn it. Like, he's won so many more significant games. Like, he has an opportunity to take over a starting job. And that is the hottest discussion amongst Jags fans right now. You look on Twitter, you look on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, anything. It's If Foles comes back healthy and Gardner continues to play like how Gardner's playing, do we still start Foles? No. No. Why? 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 This is no different than any situation like Tom Brady, Drew Bledsoe way back in the day. If you want to go a little bit more modern, you know, Dak Prescott, Tony Romo. Like guys that were just simply getting outplayed, taking their team far, and, you know, to no fault of Nick Foles, because Foles didn't really have an opportunity to really show what he has. And, you know, when he did get hurt, he threw a beautiful touchdown pass. Like, that's no doubt. No doubt he did that. But Gardner Minshew's going out there, he's winning games, he's putting, you know, the world on his shoulders, and he's going out there simply just making plays that Nick Foles would not make. That touchdown pass to Raquel Armstead, does Nick Foles make that pass? No, he doesn't. Like, these insane plays that he has in the pocket. His pocket mobility is unreal. Unreal at a professional level. The fact this guy goes out there and plays like he's been in the league for 10 years. Like he's making his reads. He goes through his progressions. Like he's what a quarterback looks like. And I think that's why us Jags fans are getting so excited for him. Because, you know, we're not used to that. We're not used to quarterbacks going out there cool, calm, collected under pressure and making all the necessary plays needed to win a game. And that's what Gardner Minshew does. And that's why I'm so in love with him. I wish nothing but the best for him. And he's going to be playing Kyle Allen next week. And that's going to be a matchup. Kyle Allen versus Gardner Minshew. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that that was going to be a matchup? Who would have thought? That's so freaking insane. Quarterbacks on the day, we're going to be giving Gardner an A. You know, like I said, there were some things, you know, early in the game that, you know, he looked like a rookie a little bit, but he did end up saving himself by making the plays necessary to win the game, and Gardner Minshew definitely did a hell of a job at the quarterback position. Now, let us talk about the defense. Starting things off with the defensive line, you know, we were all so ready this week. We were all so ready for another dominant Nine sack performance by this Jaguar defensive line, and it just simply didn't come. Like, it just didn't happen. Like, uh, Philip Lindsley, Royce Freeman, they were pretty much held in check on the ground in the second half, but that's because the Jags did so well of ball control on offense that they only had the ball for four or five minutes. But in the first half, you know, they were they were running. They were running, and they were running well. And, you know, a lot of it was these these defensive linemen getting blown off the ball. And, you know, guys like Josh Allen and Yannick Ngakwe, like, this was supposed to be an elite tandem. These guys were supposed to be unreal, out of their mind, you know, athletes, players, guys that can get after the quarterback and really win games by getting sacks and causing turnovers. Yannick Ngakwe did have a pass deflected, but other than that, you know, not a whole lot to speak about. Josh Allen, too, you know, I want to see Josh Allen just 
you know, do more. Like, he's he looks like he's in a lot of plays. Like, he makes a lot of tackles, and he's around the vicinity of the play a lot. And, you know, he's in the backfield, but just hasn't really gotten a sack yet. And I really just want to see Josh Allen emerge and see Josh Allen do something. Uh, I don't think this defensive line, you know, obviously from the caliber game that they had a week prior, I don't think they played as well as they did last week, obviously. So I'm going to be giving them a solid C. Hopefully, you know, next week against Carolina, they emerge, they do something, and they play better football. The linebackers. Quincy Williams and Miles Jack have been fun to watch this year. I think Miles Jack has he's kind of regressed a little bit. Like, I feel like... Like, with these linebackers, man, they're so, like, fast and hard-hitting and, you know, sideline to sideline, and that's all cool and fun, but, like, as far as just simple tackling mechanics, man, I swear, like, these guys have, like, the most arm tackles that I've ever seen. Like, Miles Jack, Quincy Williams, our linebackers as a whole. Leon Jacobs, man. Let's talk about Leon Jacobs for a second, actually. Leon Jacobs has played really, really well. Like, a lot better than I had anticipated. Same thing with Quincy Williams, too. Like... I did not think much of Quincy Williams just because I didn't see a whole lot of him, obviously, just like the rest of you. But, you know, he's came out there and he's made some plays, but these linebackers need to tackle better. But I think as a group, they're really solid. You know, they're young, they're unheralded. You know, Miles Jack, of course, you know, has some experience. He got the new contract, obviously, and he's been kind of an anchor of this defense for a long time. So he's obviously always going to be like reliable but this year he's really kind of taking a little bit of a step back so with that being said i'm gonna be giving the linebackers a c plus on the day that might be a little harsh but i want to see guys make some tackles and last but probably least def i would say definitely least we're gonna be talking about the secondary and talking about how jalen ramsey didn't play because of his back and he was hurt he says and we'll get to the play on the field, but I have this whole ass theory, right? And I know now this is this theory probably isn't going to be true because, you know, the, the reports are coming out that the Jags aren't trading Jalen Ramsey. So this probably is not going to be true. But my whole thought was is that Jalen was going to get traded today. And, you know, like reporters were going to ask him, so, you know, you didn't play with a back injury last week for Jacksonville. How's your back? Are you going to be able to play next week? And he's going to be like, man, my back never hurt. I was just tired of carrying Jacksonville on my back. Like, that's such a Jalen Ramsey thing to say. Like, that's just what I was thinking. I was like, he's just going to say some corny shit like that and say that he was tired of carrying the team on his back. And, you know, we were all just going to be like, oh, God, Jalen just one last jab at us. But, uh, yeah, he didn't play. And his replacement, Trey Herndon, played like garbage. Terrible. Bad. Gross. Like, he made, like, one play. And then, like, after that, he just... Didn't do much. Uh, I think safeties-wise, though, Jared Wilson, Ronnie Harrison, hopefully Ronnie Harrison's okay. You know, he did get the interception, and he ran, like, sideline, sideline. Like, he only got, like, 40 yards, but probably ran, like, a total of 80 yards on the, you know, interception return. And then, you know, Jared Wilson's a guy that I think has kind of played above expectations. He's had a couple of plays here and there, you know, head-scratching plays, but I think as a whole, Jared Wilson is playing pretty solid, good football. So, I think the safeties did all right. A.J. Boye, I think, does his thing. You know, I think he's been doing a good job of blocking out the noise, you know, because, you know, you, obviously Jalen and A.J. are really good friends, and, you know, they, they stick together, and, you know, A.J. is just playing football. You know, he's going out there, he's doing his job, he's playing football, and he's playing it well, and he's doing his thing. He's doing really, really well for us, and I'm happy for that. So the secondary as a whole, unfortunately, because they made Joe Flacco just look elite, uh, I'm going to be giving them a D plus. I think they definitely could have improved. AJ Boye had a good game. The safeties did well. I just think Trey Herndon really, really dragged their grades down. You know, a lot, a lot. You know, he just he did bad. He didn't do good at all. You know, and so with all that being said, we had the secondary, the linebackers, and the defensive line all ranked. Let us dive in to our offensive and our defensive players of the week so before we get into our offensive and defensive player of the week i want to give a shout out to the real mvp the game mvp josh lambo josh freaking lambo is the best freaking kicker in the nfl facts prove me wrong i have stats i can back it up josh lambo is the best kicker in the league that's it that's it mvp of the whole game josh lambo 100 percent but 
We do have to give out an offensive and defensive, so I guess we'll give Lambeau the special teams MVP of the week, and uh, we'll just make that an award. And Lambeau can just get the overall team MVP. Let's just say that. He did well. Kicked the game-winning field goal. Thank you, Mr. Josh Lambeau. For the Offensive Player of the Week, I think it's obvious. I think it's Leonard Fournette. You know, 225 yards, bounce back week. Really said, fuck, frick you to the haters. Don't want to get demonetized. And uh, played well. So I think Leonard Fournette definitely deserves the Offensive Player of the Week. His first Offensive Player of the Week award. And the Defensive Player of the Week. Who is the Defensive Player of the Week, guys? Let me think. It's a battle probably between Ronnie Harrison and AJ Boye probably. <laughs> That's funny because you know I gave the I gave the secondary the lowest grade. Um I'm going to give it to Ronnie Harrison. You know, got a, a interception, you know, returned it, set us up in good field position, made the best of it. And, you know, props to Ronnie Harrison for getting turnover. And, again, that's weird. I was just, The first two names that popped to my head, I was like, A.J. Boye and probably Ronnie Harrison in, you know, the secondary I gave. You know what? Let's give the secondary a C. Last second change on Treep Talks. Trey Herndon, get freaking better. But the secondary, Ronnie Harrison, his first Defensive Player of the Week award. Congratulations to you. And congratulations to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Come back tomorrow where we preview the Jaguars versus Panthers. The Kyle Allen versus Gardner Minshew matchup. Thank you guys so much for watching. And that was my Jaguars versus Denver Broncos. Week number f I said four. You know, can we play the Chiefs? Play the Texans? Titans. Yeah. Jaguars versus Broncos. Week number four. Recap. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Dream Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Dream Talks. Or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, you make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel four days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Them's just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.